Israel reportedly preparing for a new worst-case scenario, a direct attack from Iran on Israeli soil. Sources say that the strike could happen at any time within the next 48 hours. Tehran has already vowed to take revenge for last week's IDF strike on an Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. The White House says they're taking the threat very seriously. We are certainly mindful of a, uh, a very public and what we consider to be a very credible threat made by Iran uh, in terms of uh, potential uh, attacks uh, on Israel, and that we are in constant communication with our Israeli counterparts uh, about making sure uh, that they can defend themselves against uh, those kinds of attacks. Jennifer Griffin is live at the Pentagon with more. Jen? Dagan, I've been covering the Middle East, as you know, for 30 years, and I have never seen things so tense with the potential for a wider war to break out between Israel and Iran, which could draw the U.S. and others into a wider Middle East war. Until now, the U.S. has been facing Iranian proxies, but in the wake of the Israeli airstrike on April 1st in Damascus that killed the Iranian Revolutionary Guard general and six other top Iranian commanders responsible for arming Iran's proxy groups, Iran appears poised to avenge that attack with a massive show of force, targeting Israeli territory. In recent days, the U.S. has prepositioned additional military assets in the region. The attacks by the Houthis, supported by Iran, continue to threaten U.S. ships in the Red Sea. Tensions are at an all-time high. U.S. officials tell me that they have seen movements suggesting that Iranian ballistic missiles could launch any day. Israeli warplanes are patrolling the skies along the borders, and Israel's military has been put on high alert for a massive missile and drone strike that is expected to emanate from Iran. The U.S. Embassy told Americans who work for the embassy not to leave Tel Aviv, Jerusalem or Beersheba and to avoid travel to the north or south of Israel. The head of U.S. Central Command, General Eric Carrillo, was in Israel to meet with Israel's Minister of Defense, Yoav Gallant, who praised General Carrillo as a true friend of Israel. General Carrillo briefed his Israeli defense counterparts on the latest intelligence and is still in the region. We're comfortable with uh, the, the way we have communicated the, the reality of this threat. Uh, and the conversations that we're having with Israel. What we are not going to sit back and be comfortable on is uh, uh, knowing exactly what this is going to look like. And that, that's why we are working so intensively uh, to make sure that, uh, that uh, Israel has what it needs to defend itself. What's unusual is for Iran to telegraph its response. It usually relies on proxies and terrorism. With the U.S. releasing what is clearly very specific intelligence, you can't rule out that Iran will look for an off-ramp to avoid a war that could draw in U.S. forces. All eyes now on the supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. And, Dagan, if I could just add to your discussion mm -hmm. on 702, we've just received a statement from CIA Director Bill Burns, an urgent statement about the 702 FISA uh, vote that is upcoming. And he explained how crucial this 702 um, uh, war, basically to renew it is for the U.S. intelligence community. He said that they would not be able to track the Chinese uh, networks that bring fentanyl through Mexico and up through the border into the United States. They could not have killed uh, al Qaeda leader Alman al Zawahiri. They could not have uh, stopped or, or found the network that attacked the colonial pipeline. So okay. this 702 legislation needs to be renewed and without mm -hmm. uh, any amendments or warrants okay. uh, because it would be so dangerous otherwise. Dagan. Thank you so much, Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Uh, Paul, to you first on this. Uh, Jennifer mentioned China. Uh, the United States is essentially bankrolling Iran because Joe Biden and company have not done everything in their power to drive down the price of oil and to stop the export of Iranian oil, particularly to China. We have not even sanctioned Chinese buyers of Iranian oil, which the Republicans in the House have tried to do. Yeah, and we also sent them pallets of cash, right? So we haven't made Iran feel any of the real pain here. And I'm going to go back to the what I would argue is the original blunder, which is this. Subsequent to the original attack, the United States took a very uh, took a, a step back and operated essentially through the media and through pronouncements. At the same time, the Hamas leadership resides in what is nominally an American ally, Qatar. 
and we have left their operational control, command and control, in place. Where is the case on them? Hamas is a designated terrorist group. Why aren't we treating them the way we treated ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and everybody else? Indict the leadership, tell Qatar, get them on the tarmac in JFK tomorrow. Otherwise, you know what? You're going to have a problem with us because they have five, four or five major American university campuses there. We have a major military base. Our biggest one in the Middle East is in Qatar. We have plenty of leverage there. We haven't used it, and it's one of the reasons why Iran is so empowered. The Wall Street Journal today, Emily writes, Biden remembers that Iran is listening, and they say the following, abandoning an ally in wartime is an invitation to its enemies. And in essence, that's what Biden and the Democrats have done or started to do to Israel in recent weeks. He threatened to withdraw support Biden did for the Israeli war effort. You had 40 and up to 56 House Democrats threatening to cut off weapons to Israel and what happens? Well, Iran is emboldened. That's right. We demonstrated to the world how Biden responds and behaves to our allies in Afghanistan. We set the plate, we set the table right then. The reason that, as Jennifer Griffin frighteningly points out, that we are the closest to a Middle East war than we've been in decades is because there's been a failure of deterrence because our president has a fear of escalation that has eclipsed any show of strength. When you have a leader in the Oval Office that has no backbone, that is afraid of ruffling feathers throughout the globe and throughout the Middle East, that is afraid of showing support for allies rather than in, in exchange for capitulating to enemies, essentially, this is what happens. The fact that it's in the Supreme Ayatollah's court right now and he's making a decision on what exactly to do, it shouldn't have gotten that far. If you're in a bar and you see a really big guy with spikes on his knuckles, you're not even going to get to the point of talking smack to him. You are deterred. The globe right now is on the brink because this person in our Oval Office has not made it clear what would happen if things happen to our allies, or should I say maybe he's made it clear what will happen, which is nothing. Oil is up so far this year, it's soaring today up about 20%. That's enriching Iran. It is giving Iran more money to fund terrorism and fund its proxies. And if this administration is not doing everything to drive down the price of oil and cut off oil coming out of Iran, again, we're funding as a nation those very terrorism and the death of Americans. Well, yeah, but I mean, Joe Biden has thrown Israel to the wolves over a few votes in Michigan. <laughs> so like, what do you think yeah. we're expecting a little too much from this man? I mean, ask yourself, when you hear Joe Biden speak, does he project strength? Nope. You're like, I've interviewed a lot of generals, uh, intelligence officers, foreign policy experts from my podcast, The Truth with Lisa Booth. And the one takeaway you'll get is that a lot of foreign policy comes down to human nature. Right, it's that playground mentality, particularly when you're dealing with the authoritarians and, and terrorists. It's a show of strength. Right. And we went from being the big guy on the playground that people were afraid to under Donald Trump to, to getting our lunch money stolen and stuffed into a locker uh, under Joe Biden. And, and so the only way to bring peace and stability to the world again is electing Donald Trump. And we were told the guy couldn't be trusted with the nuclear codes. Now he's the only one we can trust, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so that's the, the only path forward. I mean, everything that di that guy did was a show of force, whether it's taking out Qasem Soleimani, sending those 59 Tomahawk missiles to Syria, the mother of all bombs, the list goes on. Uh, so that's the only way to get peace and stability back into the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Carly. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is significant for several reasons. One of them is that it's because it's expected to be a direct attack from Iran, not an Iranian proxy. And um, why does that? What does that mean for the United States? Well, there are a lot of American citizens still living in Israel. Uh, so, what happens if American lives are lost in this expected attack? Um, where does that put us in terms of escalation between the United States and Iran? What will that mean? in terms of the future of the war. Uh, so that is different. That could potentially be an escalation. In many ways, though, this situation is somewhat more of the same because Iran already funds Hamas and Hezbollah, two terror groups that are already uh, fighting in Israel right now. Um, and that is one of the main reasons why stopping the sanctions against Iran and taking the, the foot off the gas of the maximum pressure campaign was such a grave mistake. We have, and remember, it, Hamas has Americans. Yeah. And, so, and Iran knows that, and they've seen our response. That's so, a great point. that's uh, Biden's policy. Money to Iran and 
refuse to change course even when U.S. troops suffer traumatic brain injuries or are killed. Mm -hmm. Yep. for more than three years. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.